let's say some of our listeners that don't, it could probably be a little bit overwhelming to look at an earnings report or the earnings calls and go, I, I don't even know what to look for. <laughs> yeah, all this numbers and jargon, it just, uh, what are some other things that you would want to look for? Well, you know, and I know you guys have gone and in, in like fully analyzed a 10Q, which is, I mean, overwhelming for people that are even used to it, right? Those can be over a hundred pages. So just starting for me, at the investor relations page for a company and pulling up their press release, which is much shorter, more digestible. Sometimes there's nice graphics. Sometimes they post a deck. But I, again, I just really start on the first page with the highlights. I try to figure out what's important to the company. That's typically what they're highlighting at the top there. They'll then go into a little bit of a, you know, the CEO talking about current conditions and how they did for the quarter. And again, it depends on the CEO. Some are very transparent. Others are, you know, trying to make up excuses and you'll again, notice this for why they didn't hit certain numbers or paint a bit of a rosier picture. But beyond those headline numbers and, and some of the other numbers shared for the quarter, I also try to keep in mind, these are all backwards looking, right? We're getting information for last quarter. Is that what I'm investing in? No, I'm investing in the future of this company. So where I want to keep the history you know, top of mind, I do want to see what's their guidance going forward. How do they talk about it? Are they giving me actual figures? Are they saying, you know, we think revenues are going to be between, you know, they usually give a range between this and this next year, next quarter, or are they being a little more vague and, and holding back? So I would go right to the outlook. And I know you've talked about loving control F and I'm I'm totally with you there because I'm just control effing after I read the first first paragraph and I'm looking for the outlook. You know, sometimes they call it guidance. It's usually out, you know, usually you can control F outlook and find it somewhere in there. And again, you're gonna find more information from quarter to quarter than it's depending on the company, depending on the quarter. But I want to see what the outlook is, what figures they're sharing there not only about their business, but about the sector or industry that they operate in. What, what's the outlook there? What about the economy? And I think this last quarter, so we just finished reports for the third quarter of the year. So those were July, August, September, that period, which we saw a report during October and November. We saw like 40% of management mention recession, the R word. We're all nervous about it, right? That was a high. The quarter before, two quarters before, you maybe saw 10% of CEOs mentioning this. So I want to see, is there any insight on the overall economy? And again, they don't always say, they don't always give their view on that. So to see 40% of CEOs mentioning recession, yeah, it has everyone kind of on the edge of their seat, right? Like these are people that are in it and they know what they're talking about and they're managing Fortune 500 companies. So when I say 40%, by the way, I'm talking about the S&P 500, which are the 500 largest companies. So I go right to that outlook because I want to understand their prospects going forward, competition, and their outlook for the overall economy and how that compares to what maybe they've said in previous notes. You know, are they adjusting their guidance up or down? You never want to see them adjusting guidance down because they're already pretty conservative, right? So if they have to go a bit lower, hmm, you know, like they, they know their numbers better than anyone. Why are they adjusting down? What's changed? And then I want to see historically, okay, are they growing at a fast clip? Are they, is that growth decelerating? And so I want to keep that in mind because I want to invest in companies, you know, that are growing and, and have a healthy growth rate going forward. 